Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 287. Drug dealing and wheeling with the CIA. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Um, this one Some might call back. them the world's biggest drug dealers. Yeah. No, <laughs> if you look kinda... on Reddit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, there's nothing better than going on a deep dive on Reddit. Reddit. Great. I actually, I actually found a cool Reddit page that like is run by people that are like, it's like they I can't I wish I had the page name with it, but it's like people are like, let's look at conspiracy theories rationally. And so they always spell out these conspiracy theories and they go with the rational theories. And then almost within five comments, it's devolved to fucking absolute insanity again. There is no taking it rationally. I love it. The they they always give it their best and then it's the uh, shill. You, you get called the shill, all the names, and all of a sudden it's back down. Yeah, downvote um, like army of downvotes. I mean, this one is uh, we're we're going to be talking a little bit about the CIA and uh, um, a lot about the CIA journalism and and uh, you know if you're interested in some other fucking absolute bonker shit the CIA has done. I mean, we've done other case files and we have a ton uh, on our Patreon uh, bonus content, ton of confidentials on just ridiculous cia operations the biggest one being that that we know of that we did the case file on being cia mind control and that yeah that ventured into canada as well yeah and that one was actually proven cointel pro artichoke midnight climax yeah it's more fbi but uh operation sea spray uh fucking gladio (laughs) operation gladio there's i mean there's there's so many ties yeah there's so many. So when one comes around, it's hard to be like, well, they would never do that <laughs> at first glance, no matter what it is. You just well, look back, well, they did this and this and this and this. So, I don't know. I'm going to have a look at it at least. And my, and honestly, my looking at this one, because we're talking about the CIA, uh, their dealings with the Contras and, you know, Gary Webb, the journalist, what the really overarching things that I was like, was like, kind of scared me with parallels with what's happened like in today in recent times is that like the amount of influence these three letter agencies had on major news outlets, right. To like pressure them, persuade them to kill stories because, you know, in- inevitably that's what happened. And they <laughs> destroyed this guy's life. Um, you I know. mean, it's the, the stories that you're really com- you know, familiar to Danny Casaleros as well. Yeah, right. but oh, right. but they don't have a cool syndicate like the Octopus Syndicate. The Octopus Syndicate, yes. right? Like yeah, that's yeah, a cool yeah. name. That's like a honestly, you, you could have put Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, the Octopus Syndicate, and you know he's sell a billion yeah, dollars. Castler doesn't even have a movie. Fucking Jeremy Renner plays fucking Gary Webb in a movie. That's right. right? I forgot that's that cool. there was a movie about yeah. this about his story. What is it? Kill the messenger. Kill the messenger. Don't kill, yeah. Him. Yeah, the messenger. kill the messenger. Kill, yeah. kill the messenger. I forgot about that. I fucking like that movie. It is a good movie. Um, anyways, for this one, we obviously got to take it back a little bit to give you a little background information. So why don't we get into what the CAA may or may not have been hands-on or hands-off uh, dealing with? Well, I mean, they were actually involved during the 1980s. Uh, I mean, pretty Mayor big, Dan said it, pretty big deal. Involved. <laughs> well, 100 percent involved you're, you're in hearing Nicaragua. It from CIA Dan, so it's <laughs> yeah. fucking. I mean, they were heavily involved in Nicaragua. Everybody knows that there are multiple congressional committees and investigations into the CIA's involvement, and it was it was in the fucking news. It almost killed Reagan's career as a politician. Like, it almost killed his presidency. So everybody kind of knows that the CIA was involved in supporting the Contras or the. Uh, the rebel group that was fighting against the Sandinista government of Nicaragua at the time. So the Sandinistas, uh, which um, officially known as the Sandinista National Liberation Front, or FSLN, uh, came to power in 1979 after they basically, like, coup took over the, um, well, I guess they revolution. Cooed, they coup, they coup, coup, the coup revolution, however you want to talk it. Um, they, overthrew they overthrew the dictator. Yeah, they overthrew the dictator, which was... was the U.S.-backed. U.S. backed dictator. dictator. Um, and then the <laughs> after they overthrew that, the the the, the Sandinistas uh, took power and then the Contras arose as a counter revolutionary group. And then they were formed to oppose the Sandinista government based on their the U.S. Uh, is like it's it's much more enjoyable for us as a country if we have a dictator 
in this location. So we're going to go ahead and fund uh, uh, Rebels to see if we can kind of get back to how things were. <laughs> well, the uh, the San the Sandinistas were uh, pretty much hitching their cart to the the kind of the Cuban. Uh, like the Cubans, like they were kind of modeling their kind of revolution after the the communist uh, Cuban revolution, and they were kind of hitching a ride with the Soviet Union, kind of being like, "We're going to be, a, we're going to institute communist socialist uh, uh, government style, and that we're going to do these things, and that you know we want to model ourselves after the these communist governments." USA is like, "We can't have another communist stronghold in well, Central we can have America. a dictatorship." <laughs> yeah pretty much loyal um, dictatorship which, i mean that's <laughs> Dan, real what, quick I mean, <laughs> pop question you have to choose one or the other a dictatorship or communism slash socialism what okay, how long do we choose? have because that's going to take a really long time to explain <laughs> 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 so uh after after this yeah you have ronald reagan who is elected president of the united states he takes office in 1981 the government the us government is already kind of pretty much heavily invested in the contras already they've already kind of well, yeah, funded them fucking, they made a video game about them like let's be honest here they're fucking <laughs> right. yeah, it's, awesome. it's the hardest game you've ever played it, um, well, it's interesting it's, well, it's like obviously obviously you were doing something in the region like all, outside the cold war there was something beneficial to having a basically a puppet government in there for you I, what they were doing i don't i don't they're know they're probably but shipping was, out resources not, on the cheap yeah the probably there was probably something beneficial to having a dictator installed rather than just like you know the the oh it's it was the cold war play we could you know looking at the risk checkerboard we had to make sure it wasn't just one of theirs well, of course it's and, gonna be beneficial i mean the, U, the u.s is hand like... up his ass controlling his mouth <laughs> yeah like, um yeah. Yeah, the U.S. the U.S. had already kind of gone taken from this playbook in a couple other countries, especially in Southeast Asia. They fucking um, wrote the were... playbook, Dan. What do you mean? <laughs> they're, they're, this is the this is a chapter in the playbook. They're like how to fuck up countries one hundred and one. They're they're fresh off uh, <laughs> not not too long after uh, their yeah events in Vietnam. Right. So it's like, yeah. And they all saw how that kind of rolled out. We're like, okay, yeah, we'll just do that again. Um, yeah. They're like, this time we've learned from our mistakes. We've learned from well, our it's like, mistakes and we well, they learned time. that time to not get directly involved in it. So yeah, now yeah. we're going to just, we're just going to fund the by Contras. Proxy. We're just going to, yeah, 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 we're going to go full proxy and we're not going <laughs> to set in stuff. I so. See. Hey, that's growth. That's, that's that growth. That's growth. That's growth. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so uh, while the, uh, the the Reagan administration is kind of covertly funding, not really covert because it's pretty much Reagan pledged to support any type of kind of counter communist uh, and, forces yeah, t- that were total, okay. total anti communism. Yeah. Here, here's a, here's a question here. Now, because I had read that the previous dictatorship not very good for the people. No. Was was there was there propaganda or allegations that this new government, the the like uh, the Sandist, San, Sandinistas, Sandinistas. Mm-hmm. that they were like committing atrocities? Were they were they all that bad, or was it just that they weren't? You know, there the there were al- there were I mean there were allegations. Commies. Well, there were allegations leveled against them by the uh, the anti Sandinistas. Sandinistas were saying that they were they were Don't oppressing they were oppressing or repressing the it's uh, not biased like, at all. Well, they no. wanted to. <laughs> one of their one of their policies was like they wanted a single they wanted a single party system. They didn't want they don't want any other parties like in their, they in their the party. Bit. They yeah, want the party. The party. So so that's a dictatorship, and we already know <laughs> yeah, these states that's... loves a dictatorship. No, no, no. dictatorship problem. is one person. A, well, a party, a single party system. That's just a single. It's party. just a dictatorship. Well, somebody's got to rule the party. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't have like a singular person. No, a dictatorship is like they're like they're like. What's the problem? <laughs> We're modeling our system after the states. Why are you so mad at us? <laughs> Well, we had two systems. We have two parties. We had a two-party system. It's all the same. It's all the same I mean, party. Communism all always, by big always ends in a dictatorship as well. Yes, all, it's all, all, for, all for the people until a few people say, "We'll not. we'll manage the for you for the people, but we'll be the people to manage it." I, and then, I, then there's the inner party, and then everyone else. Yeah. Uh, so there were there were allegations, of kind of uh, both on on both sides of that kind of uh, on that conflict where each each group was kind of accusing the other of being like okay you guys are doing this you're doing this but one side is not communist and so that's the side that um and one side is communist so that's the side that the states decided to back now um, i say the states i say the states i guarantee you canada was 
was supporting. We were like right behind the seats, like. <laughs> Yeah, well, technically, we're also fucking puppets too, buddy. Yeah, yeah, well, we technically, it wasn't really the states because it really was just the Reagan administration. So the Reagan yeah. administration was, was was supporting them because Congress tries to stop them. So Congress steps in and passes the Boland Amendment in December of uh, nineteen like nineteen eighty one, uh, which is expressly prohibiting the u.s government from funds to support the contras like the the counter-revolutionary forces in nicaragua like it says that in the wording so well, specifically in nicaragua and, like, you cannot use funds that are marked for fucking that. business that. Is exactly what it says. And, uh, that's like, fuck. yeah that's it, it's it makes so much sense you're like listen why like why are we destabilizing and funding rebel groups that's not what we should be doing like it just any sound person would be like doesn't sound like a good idea like is it, it like they should just, we should just, leave yeah. I mean, this, I mean, this is how checks and balances are supposed to work. So the, the Congress steps in and they say, no, we're not going to, you're not going to spend any more of the government money, you know, f- yeah. <laughs> fomenting revolution and yeah. to overthrow a, to overthrow another country's, you know, to interview in another country's like sovereignty. Like you're not, you, you shouldn't yeah, be but, doing that. But it's well, then fine Reagan, because Reagan, Reagan had his fingers his crossed like, behind his hand. Yeah. He, like, and he's he like, he had behind he's his like, back. bust out the black checkbook, boys. <laughs> Uh, essentially, yes. Yeah. So in 1982, despite them passing the Boland Amendment, the Reagan administration officials um, are pretty much told – I mean it's reported that Reagan is pretty much telling you – telling them to do whatever it takes – to stop communism from spreading to Central America, like doesn't matter what it means, and honestly, it doesn't matter what it honestly, takes, doesn't matter what you have to do. That's a crazy do thing it. because if we know anything about the CIA, is if you give them the leeway of whatever it takes, they go, oh yeah, yeah no problem. You know whatever. they're sitting behind a fucking <laughs> whatever you know, two-way mirror, fucking watching guys bang fucking strippers <laughs> yeah. on LSD, two, like. two guys clinking coffee mugs, yeah. whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> uh so in the years following uh about 1985 uh, another uh, kind of they, they almost it's like an opportunity almost the reagan administration starts uh secret negotiations with iran to secure the release of some american hostages that were being held by iranian-backed groups in lebanon and the um the kind of the plan was that hey we're going to earmark some money um or we're gonna like basically earmark some money so we can sell take that money and then give it to these iran guys to get these to negotiate the release of these prisoners we're going to give it to them so they can buy so they can buy weapons uh they did they not directly trade f-14 parts to iran well, it's, yeah, weapons and, and money. Like, it's like during an embargo. So, yeah, <laughs> when when Iran was an active fucking enemy, yeah. of the U.S. and yeah, it was, make it that was a dollar. And then, we, well, they, they have to bring the American like, hostages okay, for four hundred and forty-four days. Things. Yeah, this is why they kept it secret for a while. <laughs> this fucking is why they crazy. didn't tell anybody. Um, and so when they when they earmarked this money, what the CIA did, the CIA did was actually like funnel off a good chunk, almost half, if more than half, of that like 30 million dollars that they had earmarked to uh send to the iran for the iranian hostages they yeah. they took that money and then siphoned it off to use it to go ahead and fund the contras in yeah. you know in spite Fucking of the bullet amendment which had been passed so well, you know, and, in spite and so, of a congressional order like in in no. their defense someone <laughs> on the memo had written Dan. is it treason i mean it's it's not treason, but it's, it's like fucking, it's, it's like <laughs> close you can get in a. Democracy. I mean, you're you're via you're violating a congressional order. Like, yeah, it's it's, like, it's, it's even worse because when you look at like supposedly Reagan was in secret talks with Iran before yeah. his election to make sure that they didn't release any of those hostages too soon. I mean, technically, it wouldn't fucking, be treason because we're not at war with. But he Iran. literally <laughs> sabotaging Car- Carter's fucking chance at re-election by organizing a fucking secret pack with iran like how is this guy how did this guy not get fucking impeached a little bit this, longer so he could win president this is a way bigger deal than watergate yeah. um, like way bigger uh yeah i mean reagan was in pretty hot water after this after people found out because once they found out about the the secret negotiations too because it was it was like a lebanese was like a lebanese uh, newspaper that kind of shot that out it. I, that leaked the 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 details of the arms deal and then uh <laughs> yeah, everybody was. found out about that it and then it's like yeah reagan was in the reagan administration was in pretty hot water after that so 
<laughs> just pretty awesome. Whatever it takes. <laughs> Whatever it takes. They came they came out on top though in the end. Uh, so I love, I love, oh. they're like in Iran giving them guns. They're looking at you. Whatever it takes. That was their motto back then. I mean, CIA, yeah, essentially pretty much it takes. Uh, during the rise of communism, yeah, that was pretty much the Whatever it takes. That was what that yeah. was the ideological <laughs> cart that, that the, the that was the that the u.s had kind of hitched itself to it's be like Here's whatever it question. takes to get to stop communism from spreading like we have to do on it. those <laughs> on those failed fucking attempts to rescue those hostages out of tehran did we lose any soldiers canada no no no, no. <laughs> well, he said we i'm like well, you know he's using the royal we he's using we the royal, royal we, we. Like Canada is the states. The states isn't Canada. Yeah, like that did we sense? did we lose it? Like we fa- we had failed we attempts at trying trying to fucking recover those hostages, right? All knowing this entire time that Reagan's got a fucking sneaky deal to get these guys back as soon as he's elected. We're trying to do like, it without having to fucked. spend a bunch of money. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Uh, uh, so uh, this is what kind of foments the, the beginning of the entire Iran-Contra affair, which people have, have, you've heard of, you've probably heard about. Um, if you haven't, it's a very interesting uh, point in time and, and historical event. So this is where you have in November of 1985, um, the U.S. National Security Council staffer, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, uh, who is a very... Um, polarizing character throughout the uh the iran contra affair Mid fall guy uh, yeah, yeah. Also, fall guy, yeah. Alleged yeah. fall guy um yeah. he he's one of the people that comes forward saying that you know he kind of authorized and, and facilitated the entire thing uh of having the siphoning off that money um the, the money from the sales of weapons to iran then taking that money and giving it to the cia for them to go ahead and use uh to, to meddle fund the again, contras to go to ahead at the time other iran countries. is an enemy so potentially those weapons are being used against american soldiers <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure uh, they were when the fucking they foiled the the rescue yeah. attempts on those yeah. fucking hostages. Uh, so the um, like in 1986, so early ni- 1986 in January, uh, after that the news story breaks uh, from the Lebanese magazine Ash Shara, uh, the the U.S. kind of uh, the Reagan administration initially denies everything they say no we didn't know anything about this like we, we have no idea what's going on um but once once the stuff kind of gets out and starts getting verified by independent sources and other media and it starts picking up steam the reagan administration has to come out and say oh, oh okay you got us kind of well, yeah uh um and then also like in november you have a cia contracted plane that is shot down over nicaragua which is transporting supplies to the contra and then that is another you know that just that throws it's another domino game. that yeah, yeah throw some more wood on the fire because you're like oh yeah that sounds like something we do but i i don't know if it was us maybe we don't know i caught him red hand they're like handing off gums <laughs> the plane on the side everybody. said whatever it takes <laughs> Got a big picture of Reagan on there. It's fucking. Uh, so through 86 and 89, uh, so those three years, like multiple inv- investigations are launched into this Iran Contra affair uh, by Congress and the media. And they go and they go and they follow all the th- a lot of the threads and kind of reveal the extent of these operations that the Reagan administration was holding. And then, you know, a lot of these are in looking to be potentially in violation of U.S. law, uh, the Bolin Amendment, which is the law. So it's like, yeah, they're breaking the law. It's not treason, but they're breaking the law. Um, close to. As close as you can get. I mean, it's, it's not treason not because war. they... Listen, yeah. <laughs> you have to be a war in a country to commit treason. So I mean, it's as close as you can get. <laughs> they're they're like, hey, war. we're semantics. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is. I mean, the entire kind of rank... Contra stuff was semantics because like they were sending money like they were sending money because it was like a loophole like they were like yeah. yeah you guys didn't necessarily say that you know it was only money you didn't that's... say we couldn't illegally sell yeah like it's not from the defense it's not from the defense budget it's coming well, it's from we sold embargo, guns so and then illegal. we whatever like yeah, you know, technically yeah, during no, the yeah, embargo they, it's illegal yeah so they were, so they were. a loophole it's they're like it's hey, embargo shimbargo who cares <laughs> Um, well, it's like where they're kind of like giving them money to buy weapons. So it's like we're not. No, they gave them F-14 them parts too. <laughs> so it's the, just the um, parts in case they shoot down. Yeah, it's just the parts. The it's not the weapons. They yeah, still have to put they, them together. Yeah, like, you yeah, know. yeah. 
So we're not, it's like we're we not, did. <laughs> it's just parts. If they yeah. put them together in an F-14, that's not on us. Uh, you could argue that in one, court one, and one, probably have a good chance of getting out right there. Yeah. We will not use him. Give her part. We will build it. No problem. They're like, hey, listen, we want F-14s. They're like, all right, we will send them disassembled with no instructions. They're like, yeah, <laughs> they figure it out. Then, hey, like, yeah, hey, that's not on not us. us. Yep. We sent we sent a pile of nuts and bolts. That's <laughs> but <laughs> she had a, <laughs> a disassembled F14 has never killed anybody. Like, you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, like you, we always said, all we said was a box of parts. And they're like, yeah, but that box of parts was specifically you could put into an F14. Well, sure, you could. You could build whatever you wanted with it. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> uh so yeah once you get through uh a bunch of a lot of congressional committees and a lot of uh like the one of them is the carry committee Dude, report in 1989 and, which and is if you watch you can on youtube some of you can watch some of these hearings and stuff on this stuff and like some of them get pretty heated like god people are fucking choked uh yeah it's 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 part of it's like part of congress's thing to oversee a lot of the stuff in the the uh, cia like that's the that's the job of a lot of the intelligence committees and that's why we have them and there's a lot of there's a there's a reason we have a every year there's a there's, fiscal meeting about the funding there's the a one defense. so here like, here you here, here we mm -hmm. have officially investigated ourselves and found us guilty of nothing well technically so no congress isn't themselves it's all like, the congress, same shit they no, all no, have their greasy <laughs> no, Con all it's funny stuff. it's funny in one of the congressional hearings that i watched uh, I can't I can't remember her name now, but she's like she it's her turn to speak. And she's she's like asking about checks and balances. And the the representative from the CIA is like, we're investigating that claim and we're going to look into it. She's like, how can you look into yourself? You know, she's like, you already lied about everything here. Everything here has been a lie. You cannot look into yourself. And he's like, uh, we'll look into that. <laughs> I was yeah, like, that's phenomenal. Technically, technically, well, whatever the, it the, takes. The role, the role of investigation is supposed to fall under the the office of the Inspector General of the CIA, which is supposed yeah. to be an independent, independent investigatory like body, which is yeah. it's, it's an internal yeah. affairs, like for the U.S., right. like for the cops, like it's kind of that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah, it works. Um, so <laughs> it's probably I, flawless. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, is there another system I'm not aware of that that uh, should be suspended with pay? Like, yeah. I, is there a better way to do it? Um, probably well, asking fucking not asking probably. Probably. Asking the wrong guy. So, yeah, so well, how guy, do you guys? Right. How do you guys do it? How do your? Um, we services? actually, actually, our 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 so the RCMP how they we have a a civilian board called the IAO that's independently hired, that's non <laughs> like. Non well, that's what the inspector general is. It's like they're supposed RCMP. to be. They're supposed to be independently. They're yeah. The ins the inspector general like oh, that's what they're supposed yeah. to do. Like they're it's supposed not, to be independent. Not they're they're not. Yeah, they are voted on. Like they well, are John like Quinn, appointed. Quinn, like a spe John usually Quinn. have like a special counsel that is like appointed. And it's John like Kerry, he he's never on. had any political aspirations, or anything like that. So like it's, <laughs> he doesn't want to have important friends or like that makes yeah. sense. He's a good person to have there. That's good. Yeah, it seems it seems like the if you were appointed to this thing and voted on, it's like you could easily muck up your career. If Absolutely. you were like, yeah, yeah, you're like the CIA. They were doing what? Yeah, you know what? I should take a stance against them. <laughs> no, well, we know of one guy that kind of did. Yeah, yeah, didn't work out so well for him. Yeah, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> it's uh, like you're getting mad at the CIA, and they're like, "You're just a regular JFK, aren't you?" <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yeah. Uh, so after these commit, so it all kind of comes out. It all comes spilling out. Iran Contra affair happens. Uh, the people that get convicted you have oliver oliver north um and then like one of the other uh what was his name poindexter um <laughs> that's his actual name like that's yeah, his name like yeah, poindexter um well these guys obviously did hard time for this right like obviously well it's guys, like so yeah you had you had well, oliver north in. you had national security advisor john poindexter and then like i think it was like five it was like five high up uh cia officials and then like a couple of other maybe like CIA contractors. No, I'd imagine like Reagan called. would really want to put the hammer down on these guys to make an example out of them. To, like, that's not what I meant. Bad, right? That's not that's what not I meant what by I, whatever I it takes. This. I, I want nothing yeah. to do with this. This is this was against this is un-American. You're supporting our fucking, you know, our enemies during an embargo. Yeah. Oh. Right? Well, that's what the that's what the power of the presidential pardon comes into play, and the Reagan administration oh. decides to pardon Ooh. a lot of these convicted oh. or or people Im implicated in the Iran Contra friends. affair. So what a fucking insane and, like that is uh, that is an insane power to wield that you can make orders for people to do these fucking insane things that are 
hey, they're not breaking any rules, technically. And then you'd be like, when some they get charged, you're like, no, no, that was totally not above board, not okay. Charges, and then you're like, ah! Yeah! <laughs> you fucking <laughs> Oliver North and Poindexter there got pardoned, but Joe Exotic, Joe Exotic couldn't get a pardon? Like, yeah, what the fuck is <laughs> this? He did nothing. That? He did nothing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the sale you of you can't big call cats some crazy cat point lady point a cunt that. anymore. What the hell? <laughs> can't be in violation of big cat laws and like yeah, that's a lot more serious offense than hey, listen, under an embargo. Dan, yeah. it's funny you say that, but from the outside looking in, it is big cat laws are more <laughs> held and rigorous held in and higher you will do regard, time yeah. higher <laughs> regard than international crime. Uh, so in the years after Iran Contra, even though the Iran Contra affair did have a very negative impact, and like I think it saw like the biggest single day, like the single day drop in like a presidential a um, presidential approval rate for Reagan. I mean, he still left office with one of the highest approvals of of any president um, after That's that. That's crazy. Um, but uh, the saga doesn't really end there because um, the 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 kind of the suspicion of the CIA would follow it into the mid 90s, where in August of 1996, um, we have everybody's favorite investigative journalist Gary Webb comes into Gary play. Webb. This is this is. You're, 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 I'm even mad now because you look at that fucking Jimmy Carter out there, 90, 90 million years old, building houses, just a good old guy, and he gets fucked over by Reagan, doing yeah. greasy ass shit. Like, come on. And I mean, it, like, yeah, it's it, it's quite interesting that all this goes on. You're just like, it's like a cloud of like, holy fuck. All right. Well, at least we're done with this. Right. We're we're out of this chapter of the United States. I'm like, I'm just dealing with this. And then you have Gary Webb's three part series, The Dark Alliance. Uh, he's a journalist working for the San Jose Mercury News. Oh, we want to get into this. Yeah, okay. of course. Do we before we do, should we get into the break? Sure. Is that a good okay. time? Yeah. Sure. Let's take it a quick break. Can't take it back. Gary Webb. Let's go. Break time. Break. You're we'll back. Be right back.
Um, as we just left off, we were talking about Gary Webb. So Gary Webb worked for the San Jose Mercury News. Um, he releases a part one of an article that um, basically, you know, we just talked about how, you know, the United States, the Reagan administration was dealing with foreign uh, countries such as Iran to to do arms deals to fund the Contras. And this article that Gary Webb writes, Dark Alliance, it basically alludes that the CIA was either involved. He doesn't actually say the CIA, but he alludes pretty strongly whether the CIA was CIA, com- CIA or either like yeah. CIA or, or a small group of rogue CIA, I think is actually what he alludes either was to complicit or just turned a blind eye to um, basically these drug dealers uh, funneling crack cocaine uh into you the, the united states to fund the contras to further fund the contras yeah so like if, if you want to straight from gary's mouth he basically states that for the better part of a decade uh the san francisco bay area drug rings sold tons of cocaine to the crips and blood street games of los angeles and funneled millions in drug profits to latin america guerrilla armies run by the u.s central Intel- intelligence agencies this drug ring opened the first pipeline between Colombia's cocaine cartels and the black neighborhoods of Los Angeles. And as a result, the cocaine that flooded in helped spark a crack explosion in urban America. Right. And I, right. I mean, that's pretty well documented that, you know, we the, the government was systematically targeting uh, poor communities with uh, uh, these kind of drugs. And it's like one of the things that like instantly when I was looking at this thing, I thought like, just by turning a blind eye and allowing this to go on. And it's like, it's not that they were like, Hey, go here, but they were like directing local law enforcement off the off supply routes and stuff. So that these, these dealers could, these deals could play, take place and the drugs to get where they needed to go. If you, and if it, you go ahead, and you got something about crack cocaine. Well, yeah, I just kind of wanted to go in. Like, I think it's kind of important to understand why this was such an epidemic and like why it went so fucking crazy you know at the time because like coke's it cocaine's a hell of a drug well yeah like, <laughs> well but crack like that, yeah. that like zell said especially crack because so so basically with cocaine it's actually cocaine hydrochloride which the hydro the hydrochloric chloride portion of the cocaine is a salt which is a base um so it's unsmokable right so in order to make it smokable you got to remove the salt which is called free basing for the most part which uh, turns out to be extremely dangerous, a la Richard Pryor. So, uh, you know, obviously oh, you have to yeah. heat it up to a, like a massively hot temperature but to create the vapors. But uh, later they ended up developing uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, to remove the hydrochloride from the cocaine and then creates the little fucking crystals, which you can smoke. And, the, you know, when you smoke them, it makes a cracking sound. Smoke and that's rock. where they got the name fucking crack. Um, but, like, why what what was the goal here like why did crack explode the way it did um one of the biggest things about crack is the fact that it's immediately absorbed into your bloodstream like we're talking you're high in five to 15 seconds like bang right and that's, I read that's, an article. When, you see, that's when you see the crack like when you see like a crackhead that's like when they're like that's like someone like when they're completely as like hunched over yeah uh, and just no, not necessarily that's a lot of people are on the nod when they're fucking hunched over like that. And then they like, but they're like, startle they're, and come up. They're, they're sitting upright, but their head is like completely I, down. I don't know how they down, stay upright. Pardon me. What? I don't know. I don't know how they stay, stay upright. What are you fucking these guys? I don't know how they have they, you see them. They're all fucking jacked. They all got abs. They got fucking, fucking solid cores. <laughs> but yeah, like I, so like you're high within seconds of taking this. And it, and it basically you took cocaine, which at the eight in, in the eighties and nineties, the co- like cocaine was a rich man's drug. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're you're cooking this fucking. You're taking your cocaine. You're cooking it, which is creating way more product, right? You're 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 taking fucking let's say five hundred dollars worth of cocaine and turning it into twenty five hundred dollars worth of fucking crack. And you're taking a rich man's drug and turning it into a poor man's drug because you can buy a, back then. You could buy a rock of fucking crack for fucking five dollars. Right? It, it it's crazy yeah. to me too because one of the things that I was looking up is that when I was reading articles about addiction and stuff, just because I was curious about this, because immediately when I started to read this and I was like, how bad that epidemic was, like, crack is so fucking addicting. So fucking addicting. Well, you're, chasing, you're chasing that first high. 
Yeah. And you'll never get it, but they're willing to fucking do whatever it takes to get that first what, high back. Whatever it takes. You, you do that on purpose, you son yeah. of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever it takes. Uh, now it's, uh, yeah, they're like, for the country. <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes. takes. <laughs> uh, now it's like, cr- like crack and that kind of stuff has only gotten more potent over the years. Like more and potent, more toxic more too. And what we've, what Lots we've seen cups. is like, Gosh, one of, yeah, some of the statistics is like, if you have an, parent that was an addict is or was an addict your chances of having addiction issues in your life are 70 percent. it's fucking crazy that's crazy if you've had yeah, one specifically or, drugs though right like yeah, alcohol is alcohol is 50 percent. they say 50 yeah. percent if if you had one or both parents battle addiction um now but you're like you're these kids are growing up in these in, in you know these in addiction environments right which is creating trauma and what do you use to treat the trauma crime. when you're poor what yeah. do you do to treat trauma when drugs, you're poor? You can't drugs, afford baby. medication. You use drugs. drugs. Now, over right? like you're just perpetuating this fucking cycle of addiction and and, and it's awful. crazy because like I you I can see a parallel of like the the absolutely massive addiction issues we have today going right back to these events here. It's like these people are chasing, you know, cheaper highs, better highs. They get they we need stronger drugs and it just slowly transitions to what's cheaper, what's stronger like they're chasing that high and fentanyl. to and to now it's like now we're into fentanyl right it's like these these this this operation of allowing whether the cia was directly involved or they turned a blind blind eye has spread like a cancer through all of north america uh into like this unbelievable addiction issues we have today and it's not like people are like oh you know this this is crazy the addiction issues just popped up they never just popped up they were slowly boiling up since the, since the eighties, right. Of these hard drugs and people getting really addicted, these poor communities that don't have access to healthcare and stuff and don't have access to resources for rehabs and stuff be, like being addicted to these hard drugs. And, and we're just seeing, we're seeing that we're reaping what we sowed from the early eighties. And right you know now. what else the, what part of this that we don't also talk about too, is the other side of the addiction and the fucking addiction to money that mm-hmm. the dealers that are, are getting as well Huge. and what did these dealers do once they got money because before most of these guys were just sent it right kids. to the conscious baby no but well not only that <laughs> but they're poor street kids and all of a sudden well you know what i'm making all this money well what, what do i need to do i need to protect myself and now i have money so what am i going to do to protect myself with this money that i got well now i can I get, afford guns now, now. i got guns yeah. right so i got to protect my choice and now all of a sudden we have this explosion and fucking gun violence and you know street level gun violence it's like this kick started just fucking absolute misery yeah and i like i i I think it's a direct direct you can directly link the problems today from the 80s i was like i was like this is fucking crazy because i was seeing so many parallels when i was reading and i was like man this is just the same issue that we've had since then just been been like it'll get better it'll get better it'll get better and it never has and you just have other interests uh feeding into the the beast that is addiction um the crazy thing is when gary red wrote this article and it came out like obviously heads are turning. They're like, wait, what? Like this is fucking insane. Yeah, and do you want to get into like the contents of the yeah. article a little bit? Let's do it. Let's hear it. So uh, the series focused on three men: Freeway, Freeway, Rick Ross. Yeah, fucking love. Right, him. not not the Rick Ross that we know. You can watch interviews with this guy. Ass. He's a fucking beauty. He's, they say he might cool. be the first ever crack cocaine millionaire. Yeah, I think he is. I thought he, that's what I heard. Was that yeah, he was. That, that that was he was labeled. And like, then he was uh, Oscar huge drug dealer. Oscar Danilo Blandon and Norwin Menendez. Um, Ross was a major drug dealer in Los Angeles. Blandon and Menendez were Nicaraguans who smuggled drugs into the U.S. and supplied dealers like Ross. The series discussed primarily Blandon and Menendez and their relationship with the Contras and the CIA and highlighted the failure of law enforcement agencies to successfully prosecute them and stated that this was largely due to their Contra and CIA connections. Yeah. Like think about that. So local law enforcement, not getting any success going after these fucking big dogs. And yeah. and some of them, some of them reporting me like, what the fuck's up with these guys? They must be like, th- they must be informants or something. Like, why can't we touch them? Like we're, they were like yeah. shocked at like, they couldn't get these guys because some um, of the law enforcement knew about it. Right. It also discussed the uh, social effects of the crack trade, noting that it had a uh, disparate effect on the African-Americans, asking why crack became so prevalent in black communities of Los Angeles, disparities in the treatment of black and white traffickers in the justice system, 
contrasting the treatment of Blandon and Ross after their arrest for drug trafficking, drug trafficking, because Blandon cooperated with the drug enforcement agency. He spent 28 months in prison, became a paid government informant and received snitch. permanent residence status. So he, he's a snitch. Uh, Ross also released early after cooperating in an investigation of police corruption, but was rearrested a few months later in a sting operation arranged with Blandon's help. The article suggests that this was in retribution for Ross's testimony in the corruption case. Yeah, his Ross was like, yeah, I work for the CIA. <laughs> He's yeah, like, totally. I'm directly working with the CIA. And one so of the cool said things in interviews. about this three-part article, too, is um, like this, this article – uh, attracted hundreds of thousands of readers to the newspaper at the time, but it also was kind of the first article that went viral because it was released. It was one of the first things that was released on like a newspaper and on the computer at the same on time the internet, on the internet. Yeah. Um, so it really took off. Like it was, it was widespread. Um, but one of the more controversial aspects of that is the fact that it was accompanied by a picture of a man smoking crack under the CIA seal. Yeah. And that's what I mean. And that was that was editors at the San Jose Mercury News. Gary Webb never he, he didn't put that picture with it. They did. But again, in his articles, he alludes to that fact. He doesn't say that they're doing this. He's saying that either they have a hand or they're looking the other way or they're incompetent, basically, by because it's right under their nose. Um, and basically, the this the the San Jose Mercury News and stuff it's a sm like it's a small news outlet Gary Webb wasn't he's not like the a huge journalist you know what i mean like well, he was a pol he was a pulitzer prize winner at this time but they they just don't have the funds to like follow through with this story so this story well, was it's a meant a small bay area newspaper right yeah, like it's so not... this story was meant to lay the grounds for a, basically their hopes was a big network because this is a fucking huge story would pick up this investigation and then run with it. Right. And then, and yeah. then see well, it to see it to the end. Wouldn't the big news organizations see this and use it as an opportunity to be like, wow, we should look into this as well. Right. Like this Gary get web guy might be onto something. Maybe we should do it. Or would they use this as an opportunity to fucking absolutely attack and dismantle Gary Webb as a human being? Uh, they took the latter. Uh, they systematically, <laughs> Uh, destroyed Gary Webb. Um, I mean, bits in the article, um, they attacked his say, saying that he, you know, he was exaggerating claims and they, the San Jose Mercury news had to come out and say like, you know, we, the figures that we, some of the money figures that we took were based on what we knew and we shouldn't have stated as fact. It was just based on our rough estimates. Right. And so they're like, he, he got lambasted. But Left he, and right. So the New York Times assigned no fewer than 17 reporters to pick apart Webb's reporting. One reporter refused, uh, referred to the team as the Get Gary Webb team, stated they were going to take away his Pulitzer Prize. Yeah. And right. He, so you have all these people that are fucking focusing. Either there was a lot of people that came out, like with Maxine Waters, is that, yeah. is that the right? Congresswoman, mm -hmm. yeah, came out, kind of had Gary's back. He had a few different people that had his back, but a lot of these major news outlets were attacking him. So you have people either defending Gary or condemning him, and at this entire time they're focusing on him as a person and not the fucking what the not CIA the story. is doing. Not right? the story. Like and the CIA is in the back and being like, <laughs> "Perfect, perfect, nailed it." We yeah. <laughs> that's how it's done, boys. That's how you do a cover up. They absolutely crucified this guy. He couldn't find work. He couldn't work. Well, unfortunately, in 1997, the Mer the Mercury News executive editor Jerry Sipos. Uh, backed away from the story, calling it flawed in an editorial. Uh, Sipal said that the paper did not have proof that top CIA officials knew about the connection between the LA drug tag and the Contras, which is so basically your own editor is coming out against you. Well, because it's because right? yeah. of the backlash, right? Like exactly, we've, like we've seen the everything... guy was seen when when Gary Webb re uh, released this article. They have he, they're having a company party to celebrate because it's getting so much fucking news and everything. And Sipa shows up in an army helmet, being like, "We're ready to fight." Yeah, like we got Gary's back, and it's like <laughs> all of a sudden he's fucking turncoat and the poor bastard. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, I'm like they systematically uh, destroyed his credibility. Uh, destroyed yeah. his life. He couldn't work. He couldn't do what he wanted. Well, they to demoted do. He him. He couldn't work. He was anymore. writing obituaries. He ended up having. He ended up resigning from the San Jose Mercury News. Um, and you know that 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 was kind of the end of the story. Like he he got. Well, he wrote a book after resigning. 
Yeah. Right. And in, in nine, what was it? Ninety eight that he wrote the book, The Dark Alliance. Dark Alliance. I mean, that was just the articles put into book form. Put into yeah, it. But he, it, yeah, but he, but it's a book form. He still yeah. technically wrote a book, right? Um, and then we have in nineteen ninety eight the CIA Inspector General's report. Basically, they come out and they'd be like, "Yeah, you know what? <laughs> he wasn't lying. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. A lot of that w- wasn't not true." Can I say that? <laughs> right? That's like funny. legit, like just kind of like openly to admit to like that they, you know, a lot of the aspects were, you know, were factually true, but, you know, they didn't have any direct involvement in drug trafficking. But, you know, maybe they turned the heads of some local law enforcement, you know, they kept some routes free and clear for these drug trades to, to happen so that the contracts could be funded. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we did a little bit of that. No big deal. So it's like didn't, you would think that. Didn't he testify against he, the report said some some to the fact that they couldn't support all this. They would do this and this and this, but they would not support or it was omitted. That's what it was like. It was omitted that they would not support drug trafficking. Yeah. So there's like, well, what about drug trafficking? Yeah, there is a there is that, a memorandum well, of understanding. There's an MOU that was circulated through the CIA and it essentially <laughs> said these are the actions that you can and cannot do while in the field. Like these are the things that you have to report. And then, you know, conveniently oh, drug trafficking was like at first was, was kind of left there. out, was not was yeah. left out. And then when somebody <laughs> pointed it out, they're like, well, uh, if it like whatever if it takes, pretty whatever much, it yeah. takes, whatever yeah. it takes, like, yeah. <laughs> So. so they never, yeah, exactly. They never really admit to it, but they say like, well, eh, it wasn't, it wasn't in the rule book. All right. We didn't break any rules. It wasn't in there. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't directly interfering into your thing, it's like, well, if it wasn't like hindering you or whatever, you're just supposed to kind of not really acknowledge that it's happening. Cause I mean, if you're in, you're involved in some of these, these shady dealings with these, uh, you know, with counter revolutionary groups, you're going to be, of course, you're like, where are they, where are you getting your guys's money from? If not, yeah. if you know, and it's like a lot of it's probably going to be from illegal activities, if not just drug trafficking, then other types of trafficking, probably human um, and other uh, like other places, even though a lot of, uh, apparently a lot of the, a lot of the Sandinistas, anti-Sandinistas, uh, the Contras, like their funding actually came from private individuals, uh, people who supported their things. And then plus like just straight up U.S. funding uh, is like a Yeah, the CIA is like, make up some names, make donations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's possible. Uh, I haven't looked into it, but it's yeah, it's just like they just put into but numbers in there. But the fact- yeah, it's... The fact yeah, we is... We keep getting all these donations from guy, some guy named Charles Ian Anderson. I don't understand. It's <laughs> fucking weird. Uh, <laughs> this, the, uh, the, the thing that, it, it bl- like, again, it blows my mind because it, I, at the time, I guess you, we, did we not know then? I guess we didn't know and have the data about, like, how devastating addiction issues are and, you know, crack cocaine could be because it's like we have generational issues now because of, of that. And it's like, if you're just, like... Not preventing it, but like allowing it to happen under your nose. I'm like, man, that is like they're indirectly responsible for so many fucking deaths. Well, yeah, you're so al- many al- allowing families. it to happen for uh, right? for big money. Follow the money, yeah. right? And it, it just it's it's again, you know, technically nothing wrong, but like it just feels so fucking corrupt and against so your dirty. own country. Like it feels so fucking like, like not not. The, like bad. Well, come it's, on. It's, it's not so like crazy. they were fucking brainwashing people and all that. Yeah, that's true. Shit, right? like, it's not so yeah. Why are you surprised? Uh, yeah. Now this this story, especially of Gary Webb, if we follow his kind of uh, path, a lot of people are interested in Gary Webb because in 2004, um, Gary Webb dies of two gunshot wounds to the head. Now it's labeled yeah. a suicide, um, but conspiracy theorists online and stuff point to. Um, you know, he, you know, Gary wrote these, he was actively, you know, against the CIA kind of took on the government lost. Uh, and this was the final, you know, they whacked him basically the two shots. They whacked him. Yeah. Like, so oddly enough, his death, um, was reported by a moving company that he'd hired. Um, he was moving out of his house because he had to downsize due to the fact that his career was fucking 
irrevocably fucking tarnished and destroyed. Uh, so he's selling his house to move back in with his mom at the time. Uh, they arrived at his house and they saw a note on his door saying, please don't come in, call 911 and ask for an ambulance. Um, so when people kind of got into his house, they found all his awards box near his body, prearranged crema uh, cremation certificate and social insurance card laid out on a table. Uh, he put his keys to his cars and his motorcycle and an, an envelope and address it to his oldest son. And uh, in a trash bin, they found a framed quote that read, there should be no uh, fetters on reports, nor must there, they tamper with the truth, but give light that people will find their own way. And a lot of people look at this scene, and the reason why they point to conspiracy theory is because um, it's been labeled a suicide, but Gary was you know, had two gunshot wounds to the head. So a lot of people point to that as being like, well, hey, maybe, maybe this was a, some sort of assassination attempt or or attempt yeah. or assassination. It was one uh, through one, the jaw. The one first the... one went through his uh, went through and it exited his left cheek. Yeah. Um, and the other one hit a main artery in his brain. Um, I mean, like I think it's important. Like a lot of people say, because there was a there was two gunshots. Like I think it's important to stress the fact that he was clinically depressed divorced yeah. unemployed um his he, his ex-wife at the time said like he had multiple motorcycle yeah. accidents that she deemed like were purposeful he's at rock he bottom. trying to hurt himself yeah yeah and uh, let's let and like to just say another thing like you know you know i get why people say that and there there there's plenty of historical incidents where people shooting themselves twice not getting it right finishing it it doesn't happen all the time it does yeah, like they did a study um, out of 138 uh, clearly defined gunshot suicides, which were autopsies. 11 persons, 8% fired two or more shots to the body. Yeah. Of these 11, uh, five cases involved two gunshots to the head. So, I mean, it does happen, but it's quite rare. Like, speaking from experience of being to these. Like a lot of times, like the first gunshot that he talks about, it sounds like a lot of times when when people are unsuccessful in doing that, they tend to pull away at the last minute, right? Yeah. Which could explain the gunshot through the mouth initially. I know where Braden's going with this, and I like I agree. Like this guy's at rock bottom, everything like that, and I know that supposedly that this does happen. Like <laughs> to to fucking blow a hole through your face. And then have the wherewithal to be able to like you think about being shot in the face and being completely and utterly disoriented. And it is with a it to, is like, with a thirty eight as well. So it's like a it's a bigger gun. I wasn't sure if it was a smaller one. It's by fucking big, it's a large caliber weapon blowing a hole in your face and then grabbing caliber, that same one. Well, that's with what I mean. A hole in your face and shooting yourself again. I would like to see. I mean, what it the... does happen, but I believe that that. Yeah, but when they say when it's... they give that percentage, like so, two wounds to the head. Does that mean like are some of the wounds like? just a graze like they actually did really no, pull first away. first one is behind the ear and out the jaw and then second one is through the temple no 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 but, no, no. that's what i'm saying, saying is i'm saying with that the, the two study that they the did head, they study a graze oh, like the study yeah. that they do and they when they count two gunshot wounds to the head does that mean like they actually did pull away and it just like grazed forehead or gra like it didn't actually like oh, was okay a, yeah, I see. like a yeah, devastating I've, wound i guess you would say i don't think i don't think it so that's what i mean so it, yeah was there eight of those where someone didn't like more or less kind of skin themselves or something and two then, wounds technically two wounds but still considered the same temporal regions are the most commonly affected regions Dude, your brain your brain study. only can your brain only like because listen uh, looking at this run and reading at it surface level gary snitches on cia ends up dead two gunshot wounds to the head labeled suicide when you read that i go like the conspiracy theorist in me it's got the seeds goes, of conspiracy i go oh shit yeah. they fucking off this guy but then when you look at this case and, and this is my this is my belief the cia didn't have to man they ruined this they systematically with them toast. and their influence ruined this fucking yes, guy's life they so didn't have to kill him if they if i they, agree if they I, didn't yeah. assass if he's not assassinated by it doesn't matter to me they, career like assassinated his career in his life you know what this he, is they are they're they're involved they they the they are directly linked to his death whether they were actively involved and shot him in the head or he shot himself they were the catalyst that led to this accomplice to murder yeah 
It's it's yeah. like like they systematize like they didn't have to do anything. They fucking ruined this guy. To me, it's like what did we, like I couldn't figure out why they like oh, you know what? It's fucking you know, like eight years, six years after you know we've made it. Let's go get this guy now. He's already down in the dumps. Let's finish him well, off. Like well, one of the things that I did read about that when I got deep deep into the reddit pages where <laughs> yeah. somebody brought up the fact that around the time of his death gary's story was resurfacing due to the post 9 11 climate yeah uh, with the wars in iraq and afghanistan and like the opium issues with fucking afghanistan um but like like it, you look at everything and like that remember his his old editor that sip boss guy yeah right after he came out against him he ended up getting a fucking promo a promotion to running his own fucking paper com- a parent okay. paper company like it's I'm it's not- interesting cuz like the parallels that i saw with this is like when you remember the twitter files leaking right and some of the ones that were leaked was that three letter agencies were directly contacting engineers at twitter and being like we need you to do x y and z suppress this story um you know block the these stories do do this and this this social media company was just being like yeah <laughs> like no no fucking problem no problem at all we'll do it and it's crazy to me because what i think that we saw in this case was just one of the first ever like they had that that cover-up playbook down pat like attack the person they had all they had influence in all the major you know all all these major news are funded right or by politically funded and stuff by by donors and stuff and and lead one way or another right that's why right it's so it's they they just they just got flex been like hey don't run this fuck gary and, and i've been a big fuck gary guy my whole life right everyone knows that about me but this is a he's the exception to the rule he got unjustly fucked over <laughs> for just writing a story that was a lot of it factually true are you throwing back to that man on the bus you one time described way back in the day yeah old mongol gary <laughs> mongol gary yeah yeah that's canon that's not yeah that's there that's his it's name not hate speech. Uh, it's that's not canon. it's not hate speech that's his name yeah that's his name that's his name so, go back uh, it's not me that's his name so it's it's interesting to see um the other dark turns I, I i think that like when i look at this i'm going like these motherfuckers you know could have stopped some of these addiction issues like it's just like it to me i'm like it, it's it's crazy how much was funneled in uh to fund a fucking another country's war right and ruin lives at home now like, uh, to fund this like i'm not super familiar with that with the whole history of that drug trade at that time but who who is accredited then with if it's not say the cia has nothing to do with it zero who is accredited with bring like smuggling? Was there ever like a big bust? Like Colombian drug lords. Just, just, yeah. There just were Colombian. cartels, like cartels yeah. existed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drug cartels uh, so did I, exist. I just, that's what I mean. So that we know, we know that people are smuggling. These people yeah. are down there. Most How can not attributed to a Cuban named Tony Montana? And we're and we're just <laughs> well. The thing is, is like we we know about them, but it's it's the fact that it's like you know of these things, and at some points you could stop them, but you go no because we know this money is going people to get, get to money the somewhere everywhere. Yeah. Right, like this is going to fund our interests. You scratch so, our back, we'll scratch your back. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. This is where you go. Right, like that, and that's where kind of my brain goes. I was like, is there CIA operatives, you know, directly giving information of where to smuggle drugs in, where to bring drugs in, uh, where's going to be free, or are they just are they knowing the routes and then just going like, eh, and I, I happen to, I don't look there Sundays, so <laughs> right, like how it, like they say they weren't directly involved, but you know. You can be quite indirectly involved in uh, getting drugs over the border in any of these communities. So, well, it's smart too because it's like you've you've created this gigantic industry where you can farm a win whenever you want one. Like, ah, you know, we need a big, we need morale, we need to distract people. Let's get a big drug bust. Yeah, right. Well, or like, or you're one you you're one you're not working with, right? You're like these are yeah. these these ones over here coming in. We are not working with them. So we are not going to turn a blind eye well, to these coming the in. The competition will probably rat on them. Yeah. Like the ones you're working with will probably be oh, like, hey, dude, hundred percent. I never even thought about that. Here. Like you think about yeah. fucking what a freeway, freeway Rick Ross. He was probably Rick snitching Ross. on other dealers that were getting picked up so he could have free and clear run this stuff in more efficiently. Yeah. Right? Like he was literally working under government protection. Well, the right? CIA has been doing this like a fucking white boy rick look what happened to white boy rick like, yeah fucking... like i mean there's there's tons of stories of the cia you know doing whatever it takes 
And a Hashtag lot of the times, whatever it takes. Sometimes yeah. it seems like whatever it takes is at the expense of. Uh, <laughs> That's what the case file should be. It should be CIA drugs and whatever it takes. Whatever yeah. it takes. Because <laughs> it seems like a lot of these times, it's like the the you know the baseline of people of who it does affect is like <laughs> poor, impoverished, and minorities is like who it like is like they're like yeah. <laughs> Whatever it takes, as yeah, long they as they got it shitty enough, any, who cares? What are yeah. they gonna? What, yeah, as long as it awful. stays in the inner city, right? Like it's crazy, but like we we've, we've, I think that this is, you know, you've directly, you've directly, you've indirectly involved yourself in the addiction issues that we now see today and the problems we see today. Uh, you know, if you're if you're Definitely not aided some, and abetted, aided, aided exactly. Had to, uh, it started so, somewhere, but it, it then makes me think of like you know, it's like because we see copious copious amounts of fentanyl and stuff just like cruising into borders and stuff and like no issues and it's like you know in 10 years are we going to find out that there were some shady dealings of this stuff getting across where it was like what are we what's being funded you know what i mean it makes you question everything it's hard to fucking uh trust these people now i got a question dan this is for maybe for more for dan is this is the cia other than like the actual military the only like agency it's evolved outside of the united states Oh, you have other things like depending on what the what the case has to do with. I mean, you have the CIA, NSA. There's a couple of, like National Security Council. There's a couple other alphabet agencies that yeah. Do NSA stuff is just peeping often. toms though. It's like you know, you, I, mean, I mean, but I'm saying like the involved and the a DEA technically DEA can work in conjunction with other countries and stuff like that. So it's like yeah, like they boots on the ga- on the ground potentially undercover in other countries. Yeah, DEA like, yeah, can yeah, do DEA, that. Stuff. DEA, uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. They, there's there's cases that are eerily sim- similar to this uh it's just dea not C- cia so like yeah there are other there are other organizations that can work outside of the united just states when, just because i asked this because the only, only only thing you ever see around is it's always cia over in this country cia, CIA. well and the, that's all the, that's always the head not, not necessarily the headline just the talk it's always the cia spy i was just wondering well, they're the big spooky guys like the yeah. cia carries that Dude, kind of that and that th- that the reputation amount prop- so <laughs> the amount of propaganda that goes into these agencies being always the good guys is unbelievable so the oh, cia, the CIA like, are the worst just, worst at hiding it if, if all these other if all these other the alphabet agencies don't ever get i don't like, even want to start to dig into what the mib has been up gary to. devore yeah. buddy look up the story we should do one on it What's screenwriter it? murdered Screenwriter murdered. murdered? Well, another there's a reason Gary? why all these. There's a, there's a, another Gary. Maybe they just have a thing for Garys. Yeah, <laughs> Gary. Yeah, but I mean, there's a reason why the fucking intelligence agencies and everything are always the heroes and all these fucking TV shows that we're forced to watch. A little bit yeah. of a what's that? What was it? What's that operation? Operation uh, Mockingbird, where they instill CIA know. agents supposedly into film and TV and news. Isn't there a story where the CIA is like owns the copyright to one of the most successful songs? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that I sounds familiar, that. but I yeah, yeah I'd I have to look it up. But I that sounds familiar about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually think, and they're like behind it. It's weird. Anyway, we'll get it. It's, behind it's, everything, it's, they're behind social media. Wind of change. Is that what it is? I don't know. Maybe it's it's just it's the story of Gary Webb. I personally, I I rare yes suspicious sure if you're into conspiracies 100 percent, it has all the makings but when you look into it yeah. you go why they they Wind already by scorpions yeah they already they already ruined this guy they like ruined his life they're already involved in his death either way either way it doesn't matter they're involved uh so it's it's, it's just crazy it's crazy what these you know and people forget and don't so do the moral of the story is don't try and do any good journalism because it yeah. may come back. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, just don't write right. about the CIA. Yeah. Don't write about the CIA. Don't mind your own business. Don't do whatever it takes. Puff pieces, situation. baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the moral of this story. Uh, that's a fun case fall. Uh, Zell, do we have a theorite of the week? We did. You had it. You have it. I have it up. Um, oh, this is a good one. You know what? Sometimes you, all you got to do head over to a ufo festival or a cool festival send us a picture uh and you get the year of the week this scott martin uh was uh at the kecksburg ufo uh festival in uh pa cool it's dope so it's uh 
congratulations. I actually just closed the window by accident, but he was there to send a po- picture of the little bell there, little acorn looking UFO. Um, the, the Glocka. Yeah, the Glocka. Who knows what it was? Um, thanks for sending that in. You're the theory of the week. Hope it was fun. Let us know if you see this. Uh, I'm kind of interested how it was. Uh, I'd love to get to more, but it's, you know, it's a little difficult up in Canada. We only get some roving fucking weird Bigfoot ones. Not that yeah, they're bad. They're just... There was a Bigfoot one in Kelowna, actually, I think. Was it? Yeah, it's the same guy, really? Tom's, Tom's, Tom Saweed. I could have him on. He's just a, he's an interesting guy. He's an interesting cat. We could have him on. He would come on instantly. I've talked to him numerous times. He was, he was one of the only people interested in my Bigfoot photos. Um, I mean, if we had the skull lion on, we could probably have this guy on. Yeah. We probably make well, no, he would. He already, because I kind of told him when I was, I was like, could I set up a merch booth that you're at the, and he, we were kind of going back and forth. Nice guy. But he does a lot of goddamn Bigfoot festivals. And it's the same, it's the same stuff. It's not, a, it's not a lot of interesting. Well, hey, buddy, the sl- supply and demand. People are asking yeah. for him. He's got to do it. People, people are seeing him. They want him. They want to come together yeah. and talk about him. Uh, yeah, so he had the Bindernagle Festival, and then he had one in Merritt, and then I, I, he was probably involved in the one in Kelowna. He's got a Bigfoot. Listen to this one. This one's wild. Bigfoot Alaskan Cruise. What? So you you Sold. all pay. Oh, that sounds Sold. like a pod trip. <laughs> so you, you pay. Sign me up. It's a board of fishing boat, probably. Because if and you're you gonna find Bigfoot, it's gonna be out on the water on a cruise. Well, That's yeah, and when then you find and then, but what everyone does is what the like I was reading the chats and stuff is they want you to bring like telephoto lenses, telescopes, so you can watch the coastline the entire time. <laughs> Plot twist. Sounds Bigfoot is awesome. on the cruise. <laughs> like you're taking so picture, you're taking pictures of the coastline. And you're like, this guy next to me is really tall and really hairy. <laughs> yeah. Then you just pay. No, then that. Oh, this is perfect. It's a perfect business idea because then you pay someone to kind of give a little glimpse that they're Bigfoot on the beach. Get a couple photos, spark a little interest. Perfect business. Are you implying that people would hoax Bigfoot? A hundred percent. That's disgusting. For money. Disgusting. And fame. Well, I think Coy- what's his name? Coyote Peterson. He's gonna he's gonna hear this. He's oh, gonna shit. fucking start. He's gonna start it Fuck up. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck Coyote Peterson. He sucked my ass. Okay. Um <laughs> good devil suck my ass. And listen, you still got lots of time to get your logo in for their lo- our logo contest. We're looking for a new logo. First place was three three hundred bucks. Second place was, was two hundred, and third place was first. I, th- I think that's 100. what we offered. Definitely close. And you're getting money. And fourth place, you get sh- jack shit because nothing pays for fourth. Uh, but send us in, cool. Like there, we've gotten a couple, some really cool ones. I'm telling you right now, a winner has not been picked. Right, winner has not been picked. So definitely uh, keep sending them in. Uh, all we're looking for, you see the logo right behind me. The little, uh, you know, our simplistic logo. Incorporate that somewhere in it, right? And remember, it's a podcast logo. Some people have sent some fucking cool logos, and I'm like, well, that's a shirt for sure. Yep. Nah, you know, not necessarily a, a a logo for the show, but fucking super dope. Good shit. And if you're not supporting the show, when you want to help your boys out, get early access to the case file, ad free, all the bonus stuff. You got to go to aliantheorist.com, hit the support tab. Sign up on Supercast or Patreon. Get that classified feed. This week's new supporters we have Viet. Hmm. Guyan? Win. Gwyn? Win. Win? That's yeah, Vietnamese. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, I think she lives in Y E N. I actually think she lives near me. Yeah. Oh, cool. Paul Anar. Now, what did Alba Jordanson? Bjornsson. Zell's so Alba cautious Jordan. to read because he doesn't know if people are trying to punk or not. So he's like, "Is this a regular name or a <laughs> fucked up?" Well, name? this this one's got this one's got accents in and shit. Anor Abjordson. Bjornsson. Oh yeah, that's a good Bjornsson. name. That sounds like you should be able to pronounce that shit for sure. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? That sounds like your native tongue, buddy. <laughs> Let's go. Lee Alfana, Aaron, Ron Alicious Pondalicious. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's good. Jared Birch, Gavin G. A fifty dollar per month pledge, top tier by the real clown baby. Hell yeah! Not the fake yeah, clown baby. baby. Yeah. Not the, the fake real, one. The real one. The real. And OG clown baby. Last but not fake, least, we got Rick hate Bus. That fake ass clown baby. That's it. All right, and as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes 
on the skies. See you in the after hour. Listen to this fucked up bullshit. There was a fucking <laughs> 21 year old in Campbell River, where I'm from. He was walking at night. First off, why are you walking no, at it's night? That's where you live. Anyone, it's not where you're from. Anyone. Get it right. A, yeah. Anyone who goes, like, I was walking at night. I'm going, why? Why are you walking at night? For what reason? I'm instantly suspicious. This guy's walking at night. 21. Young dad has a, a new two year old. Uh, there's 